I'm actually want to read this because I want to know what's happening here because something happened really strange over at Flipping Bergheim over the weekend. And I want to see what the vibe is because for some reason, there is a real hesitancy for people to speak openly and clearly about issues, especially when they happen in Bergheim. I don't know why it is because the club's big enough and there's way, you know, there's a lot of people, turnover is flipping crazy. The amount of people that go through those doors on a weekend basis, it's very unlikely that if you speak ill about the club that people are going to recognise you and don't say, ah, you're the person that's not going to come in. It's really unlikely. And if they do, it's Berlin anyway. You know, there's flipping clubs every on flipping every street corner you can go to if you do end up kind of getting put on the flipping blacklist or something of, Berg, of Bergheim for speaking ill. But sometimes the reason why I find it strange is because usually the people that are afraid of speaking ill of the club are people who maybe suffered, you know, a, a very traumatic experience being there whether it was an argument in the queue whether it was a fight whether it was somebody you know assaulting them raping them spiking them whatever it may be it's something really heinous that you'd think you know the person would have every reason to complain and to want to speak about it to somebody right you'd think that will be the case but for some reason for whatever reason people don't seem to feel like that so i guess you know for whatever reason um you have to kind of read these things out somewhat anonymously and just hope that you know it resonates with some people but i remember reading when i was on the sub the other day that some people were talking about oh there was an issue with police at the front of Berkeley kind of stuff and things were happening bloody blah 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 so let's actually see the thread here and i can see what they're talking about so this is a thread that someone posted I'm not going to read their username or anything I'm just going to read the post itself and see what the vibe is saying it says i've been struggling with whether or not to share what i experienced on sunday morning i'm still processing it and traumatized by what i experienced i currently cannot type oh you did type a few a bit my person whoever this person is you typed a lot because there's like 17 million paragraphs here so you're not really struggling to type but hey we move <laughs> let's continue here let's scroll back up at the top i'm sure my laughing will definitely be <laughs> seen as a good thing later on but let's continue um i'm sure i won't regret that let's see i'm still processing it and traumatized by what i experienced i currently cannot type because my left hand is injured as a result of what happened on sunday therefore i've given permission to my partner for him to type what i'm saying aloud word for word i apologize for my thoughts sound scattered as i still have um still feel all over the place about th these days cool i've read some of the comments on various threads about what happened on sunday morning and some of the details are inaccurate therefore i decided to share what happened my partner and i were at an event near Berghain and on a way home we passed by we had no interest in going clubbing that evening as we were both pretty exhausted from an event we were at all day i've already been to Bergheim before in the past several years ago and i've nothing negative to say about the actual club inside so please don't assume that i have an anger towards the club in or itself because i was tired i wanted to take a break and we thought it might be interesting to see people's outfits and the overall vibe and maybe share a cigarette we weren't planning on staying long we were sitting on the concrete block that is across from the guest list yeah, everyone does that really. It's a little block bit. It's next to, there's a cash point there also. People like stand there, eat. Like if you pass that area, you know what the person's talking about. Usually there's loads of flipping drinks on the floor. People drink their last bits of drinks there. They've got some food there, pizza, whatever. There's a cash machine there and just up the road or just, you know, down the alleyway. Sorry, that's where the little park is where you can sit down in and have a joint. So that's usually a place where people congregate. The Bergheim staff do a good job of like keeping the doorway clear. They don't like people taking pictures right in front of the door or near the door so you don't show people's faces. They keep the area clear in front of where the, the door area is, but usually where that concrete slab is, which is next to where that installation of that piece of art that's like an upside down A, like the anarch anarchist A, that's usually on that side so it shouldn't be an issue really so it's a bit strange if this was a problem so it continues we're sitting across we're sitting on the concrete block that is across from the guest list we have done that several times before in the past sitting there and have never experienced anything before like what we experienced on sunday therefore we assumed it was okay we noticed there was a lot of people around us doing the same thing they were not necessarily close to us but they were around at some point two men came up to my partner and i and started screaming at us telling us we had to leave their tone was very aggressive and like they wanted to start a fight the man screaming at me was tall and slender and light-skinned bi biopic bipoc what's that mean oh yeah that's like um what is that actually black and indian person of color or something what the fuck is that what's a bipoc oh yeah i'm so ignorant of this shit what's a fucking bipoc bipoc stands for black indigenous person of color so what why do why would you say bipoc and just, just calling them like so I guess this person didn't know if they were black or Indian. Okay. I'm just going to keep reading. Um, the, the man screaming at my partner was white, short and middle-aged. I told them that we were just sharing a cigarette and that we would leave soon. 
I explained to them that we had no interest going into the club at all. He told me again that I should leave and then he grabbed me on both sides of my shoulders in a very tight grip. Yo, imagine you just, you're just you just coming down from going on a night out. You're tired, you're a bit delirious and you just want to sit down and have a cigarette with your partner. And then suddenly now you've got these guys screaming at you, one of them touching you and trying to physically move you from where you are. Like, God almighty, what an absolute nightmare. This is definitely a vibe killer. Um, I spent my own interest in going to a club. He told me again that I should leave and grab me on both sides of my shoulders in a very tight grip that was painful and shocked me because of how forceful it was. I told him to stop touching me, but he kept on being aggressive. I asked him, why are you doing this to us? They aggressively kept pushing us and my partner and I told them we were going to call the police because I didn't know why they were being so aggressive. At this point, I was totally in a state of shock and if everything felt like that it was moving so fast it was terrifying all i remember was when i was leaving um when i had my back turned i was pushed whoa so who was who did this was this a security guards at Berghain? like who was doing this the bouncers or just random people that wanted a seat or something like what was going on so i turned around i was pushed i remember flying in the air moving towards a concrete block in rapid motion i shouldn't be laughing but that is fucking crazy imagine coming down wait to have a cigarette and just chill and now suddenly your face is fucking in you're flying through the air and your face is about to fucking crash into a fucking concrete slab that you were just sitting on um, i remember thinking that i was going to die my head was towards the concrete the ground beneath me was all even stones uneven stones like a broken chessboard then there was a wired fence above the concrete stones but all i saw was my head going towards the concrete <laughs> next thing i know i'm on the ground all i feel is pain and shock though i would be dead um i thought i would be dead and i was and i was still alive but my hand was um was killing me it's like that song what's i think um i'm still alive I'm still alive. Let's see if I can find it, actually. Do you, do you remember that song of that rapper that when he got shot by his ops, but then he obviously, you know, was alive? Was it? Was it? Still alive. Still alive. Rap song. Let's see. I'm still alive. 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 My leg hurt now. I got to anyway uh, <laughs> i didn't know what happened i felt like i couldn't breathe it was hell i looked down at my hand and was horrified i couldn't recognize my hand oh my god Bro had broken at first i thought i was a finger was missing and then i realized my pinky finger was making a shape i didn't know was humanly possible it sent me into a state of shock my partner told me later on that i couldn't stop crying and screaming my partner kept telling everybody around us to call the police or ambulance he kept telling people and waiting nothing was happening once my partner felt calm enough he called the police himself if your partner is there honestly i would i'm catching a murder case i'm not even i'm not even a violent type of dude but if i'm with somebody and this shit happens i'm catching a murder case like it just is what it is we wait for people to call the police what it took a while for the police to arrive they asked me some questions i told them exactly what happened and then later the ambulance came and took me to the nearest hospital next five hours were nerve-wracking humiliating and scary i had no idea what happened to my hand i had no idea um, if i'll be able to use my finger again i had a hard time walking even today it's hard for me to straighten out my right knee i have injuries on both knees an injury on my left elbow pain around my eye and left side of my forehead and the left side of my head in general i have an all i have an almost harry potter like scar on the side of my head i don't have health insurance in germany so the doctors didn't have um didn't want to do all the test they mainly focused on my hand they took some x-rays and they said my pinky finger is dislocated oh my god imagine like i said again you're having a cigarette on the come down you want the people watching just chill maybe grab a quick drink have a little chat or something whatever it may be and now suddenly your fucking pinky finger is dislocated they said I would have to do more x-rays before the week in case to check if nothing is broken and that everything is okay. They bu they buddy wrapped my pinky finger and my ring finger and also they wrapped my hand and my wrist. It looks like a temporary cast to stabilize my injuries. For the past few days, my partner has had to help me shower, take to me to the toilet, eat and walk. I couldn't walk at all for the first day. I had to stay in bed all day. Our sleep has been really bad. I feel okay sometimes and then sometimes thoughts just overwhelm me and I feel anxious and scared. For the first few days, I couldn't stop crying. At times, I just felt suicidal. 
Jesus, I feel trapped in my body. I can't move freely now. And every time I look at my cast, my hand and my wrist, it's a remember, a reminder sorry, of what happened to me. I feel helpless. I'm trying to navigate all this in a country that is not my own with systems that I don't understand and it's daunting. I don't know where to find an educated speaking therapist. I don't know if I'll navigate things without insurance. I don't know if the authorities will even help me. I Hopefully this this post is a good um is a good sort of like a call to action to some people who also do want to help out who can help out to get in touch with this person i hope that does happen i'm sure it has happened because you know that berlin community type people you know they can be a little bit insufferable but they do rally around people when they need so i'm sure they're going to do that um it continues to say i can't stop thinking that i could have died the fact that i'm alive ultimately comes down to centimeters i keep telling my partner that it could have been so much worse it keeps me up at night i can't get the image out of my head of how my finger looked as if i have some kind of horror movie only that this is my life i don't know if i'll ever get the image out of my head even though even thinking about it still makes me want to vomit and gives me anxiety attacks you know what though to be fair to this person and to be fair to the situation with some kind of level of seriousness the burger and definitely need to address these issues that happen in the queue or outside whether it's kind of manhandling people whatever it may be right checking people out if they're if they're if they look like they maybe have od'd on ghb or something and then they end up in you know dire straits outside somewhere because they're not safe whatever what the situation is they need to sort it out because this could get really dicey dicey as brendan Shaw would say very quickly all it takes is one person you know having a very what you would say um permanent sort of like end post leaving burkhine or outside of burkhine and suddenly the whole landscape of clubbing in that city changes maybe the licensing around burger like things could happen so quickly you know to negative affect that club if they don't kind of get these kind of things in check because i still don't know who did this don't know we don't know if it's a, if it was a bouncers if it was just some random people who were in the flipping guess this queue that man handled these people we have no idea but they really need to get a grip on these type of things because this could end up negatively affecting not only them but the wider kind of clubbing scene community industry whatever it may be out there in berlin so jesus i've been thinking a lot of whether or not i should share this story i'm a very private person i tend to go inwards and when i'm dealing with trauma but i feel i need to share this because the thought of something like this happening to anybody else is horrifying to me at first all my natural reaction was to blame myself was it my fault and then i thought about all the ways that society gaslights people i wasn't taking any pictures or videos i wasn't drinking i wasn't doing any drugs i wasn't selling anything i wasn't talking to anybody on the line i didn't cut anybody in the line i had no interest in going to the club that day all i did was sit on a concrete block that i've sat on before and took a break and shared a cigarette it was a normal day but everything about the situation feels abnormal yeah that is so fucking unfair in it legitimately so unfair you're legitimately minding your business like one of the things you would they kind of tell you about places like Berkheim and clubs in general in berlin is that you know it's the best place to go to mind your business you don't get bothered usually because they kind of screen all the cunts and the wankers away at the door through the door picking right door picking has its issues has its problems but for the most part it allows them to sort of curate the space inside and the ones that do get in if you, if you are a dickhead you're so chuffed that you got in you usually on your best behavior so for the most part you can go into those kind of places and you know if you mind your business people usually just leave you alone so imagine being outside and thinking the same thing you know could rub off from the inside on the outside and then suddenly you end up in this physical altercation because that's the thing that's really weird about it. it's like i've never even seen people argue on a berlin dance floor before let alone fighting let alone pushing somebody behind their back as they're walking away like i've not even seen people argue like exchange like you know adult fucking words to each other like it's never happened so this is crazy it continues last few bits here i told my family i haven't told my family sorry or most of my friends about this because i'm still can't believe it and i don't even know how to begin talking about this or dealing with it i'm re i feel very isolated and alone in my opinion there's no justification for violence or force there's no reason why the first reaction of security staff should be to grab my shoulders and squeeze me like they want to crush you there's no reason to kick somebody when they're already on their way out or already on the ground when they are not even facing you when they have no knowledge of what you are about to do and treat you like a piece of trash they didn't even check if i was okay none of the stuff at burger and check if i was okay i could have died and no one would have cared i still have a lot of my mind that's coming and going i'm exhausted i'm enraged i'm still figuring out how to handle this and i feel like i didn't share this it was going to eat me up inside i'm still really scared about this being so open i know the burger is a very powerful institution and it 
it isn't easy for me. Yo, imagine a nightclub scaring you to, into not sharing a story where they fucking physically assaulted you. Absolutely crazy. I still can't understand why they had such a re reaction to, to this person. I'm assuming it's a woman sitting on the concrete block. I don't get that. That's the thing I don't understand. That concrete block, like I said before, is somewhere that everybody kind of sits down at. Um, it's usually a place you kind of go, like I said, to kind of, you know, f eat your food. Um, maybe that you picked up at the flipping shops around the corner. Or maybe you got something delivered to you or something, whatever it may be. Finish a drink. Because you're far away from the door. You're like, I don't know, 50 meters or something away from the door. Um, and they usually leave you alone, the Burger and South, if they see you there. Maybe they didn't like it because there was too much of a group of people sitting on the block, standing around, the guest list queue. Maybe that was a reason. But still, if that's the reason, talk to somebody communicate to them first with your words like you don't need to fucking be screaming at them and then kind of physically grab them and then push them in their back like it, it, maybe the physical grabbing on the side of the arms because the person's high or drunk and you feel like you're not getting through some cool but when they turn around and walk away you shouldn't be pushing them in their back especially if you haven't told them hey can you hurry up and like there should be prompts and words said before you escalate to that level it's still not excusable but there should be hey move hurry up get out of here hurry up, uh, uh, and then call i'm gonna push you i'm gonna like warn them or something so they can brace but just push something in the back while they're you know probably coming down from just going out doesn't need, doesn't need to be even drugs and alcohol just needs to be from going out is exhausting and then you're pushing them and their balance is all off and they go flying and then they dislocate their finger and damage the side one side of their whole entire body and shit like oof like brutal and again it says a lot about the quote-unquote community over there at Berghain. everyone in the queue just looks at them no one wanted to call the police even though the partner should have called the police you shouldn't be waiting for people to call the police especially if your your partner has been splayed on the floor flipping in front of Berghain like that right Me, like i said i would go red and i would literally catch a murder charge out there i'm not having that sort of disrespect done in front of me but come on man no one in the line stepped in to kind of help them out cool lift you know help the person up from the floor assist them on the way home like nothing zero Oof. so much for community in it but yeah hope the person gets better um evolves actually in the next few days i'm not gonna be honest i'm interested to see how it evolves because this is a bit mad but yeah hopefully the person um recovers and gets better because this is a bit mad but interested to see how they develop it how this evolves and how this gets sorted but honestly, hopefully the person gets better and um, something is done about this um, either way because usually these situations over there tend to kind of get swept under the rug for whatever reason. Uh, maybe they get dealt with personally, but usually something happens uh, aloud and then it gets dealt with in you know, silence behind closed doors and no statements are made and shit. I don't know. Let's see what happens anyway. Let's see what happens. Maybe there's more to the story um, that meets the eye. I'd assume places like Bergen probably have CCTV outside the flipping building or even maybe inside the building. So usually they probably got, you know, some access to the footage of what actually went down that may actually help to kind of get to the bottom of the issue. But this sounds really, really excessive like the force used um was way way over the top if what has been said in this account is true and a reflection of what actually happened but hey let's wait and see let's wait and see